welcome to the Speakers Forum. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we are here at least some Sundays. Uh, and we're not an organization, we are merely a group of people, that's what we're going to do here today though, but a group of people who talk about a range of issues from essentially our own individual viewpoints. Speakers Forum is not a registered organization of any sort, we are merely a group of um, public speakers. Everyone is welcome to take part by talking if you want as I'm talking now, by making comments, by asking questions, by handling whatever. Um, today we are blessed, um, and there's no connection between us and the um, piano, but we are blessed with a free piano that's available over there, and people have been making very good use of it, and some of them are very talented. But we're not connected to it as such. Um, so we are Speakers Forum, we are Free Speech in Action. Uh, you can say whatever you like at our Speakers Forum. You just need to be prepared to handle the fact that the audience might wish to um, question you, handle you, whatever. Uh, all as long as it is actually uh, not against existing Australian laws. Uh, one thing that um, has me talking here, and I've been talking here myself for the last over 15 years, one five. One thing that has been talking a lot here is um, the shallowness of um, debate in the media. And it doesn't matter whether it's um, you know, so-called right-wing media or so-called left-wing media. The level of debate is very, very shallow. I must admit I'm no expert in it anymore because having realized that it is indeed very, very shallow, I stopped paying a lot of attention to it. So we are hoping that if Hales Peter's Forum does not amount to very much, we are hoping to be at least better than the media. Which shouldn't be very difficult. <laughs> uh, today I want to talk about the shallowness of what's known as political correctness. Uh, I'll use as an example what we know as women's rights. And I'm going to make a decision between what I call good women's rights and the nonsensical debate that goes on in the um, intellectual circles about the same thing. So, you want me to say that women should have as many rights as men? I'll say that. No problem. You want me to say that women should be represented in management positions? I'll say that. No problem. You want me to say that women should be prime ministers? Why not? You want me to say they should be queens? Actually, they already are queens. But yeah, you know, if you want me to say that, I'll say that. No problem. None whatsoever. You want me to say that women should be able to compete in the workplace on an equal basis as men? Right, I've got no problem with You're that whatsoever. You're missing their talk. Sorry? Now, you want me to say You're that women your talk with your headphones. are oh, in okay. competition it's okay. against <laughs> men? Like that women for my class and that as a class women are in competition against men? No, I will not say that. Not in the least. Could you repeat that last point please? Having said the very many different ways in which I believe that women should have absolutely equal rights as men, I want to say that I do not believe that women are in open or should be in open competition against men as women against I In the sporting field or in other areas of society as well? I don't, I don't believe that women form a class of society and that men form another class and that men and women should be open competition against each That's other. Right. It shouldn't be adversarial, should it? It's become too adversarial. Right. So, uh, we talk a lot about having um, equal women in government, in, <laughs> in the workplace and whatever else. Now, that's kind of like a yes and no um, um, point because Having said that, by all means, we should have equal opportunity for men and women and for women everywhere. Uh, equally so, I do believe that when it comes to rising the family, on average, not in total, but on average, not everywhere, but on average, women are best placed to um, raise a family. And I believe that women who are in the process of raising a young family should have the right to not just take maternity leave, or for that matter, you know, men take maternity leave in the workplace. That's a good thing, you know, it's a good thing to be able to take 
fraternity in the workplace, but ideally, women raising young families should be able to just stay home and get paid quite a bit for it by the government um, and not have to actually get a job, let alone having to take leave from that job. Yeah. It's a very Because they're doing the society a service, aren't they? Hey? They're doing a, a valuable contribution Look, to the doing society. An extraordinary service to Australia. That's right. They're procreating. But also they're fostering, they're fostering the next generation of children. They're fostering and teaching and caring for and, you know, educating at home the, um, the next generation of Australians. Plus, depending on who you read, um, it can be shown that um, when young children are involved, it is in fact very, very important to them to be in full-time company of their mother, till a certain age. Up to like five or beyond five? Not too sure. Um, so I'm going according to the experts and of course you know that the various viewpoints have got their own experts yes. so no one agrees on any of these um, so you see I am making a very big exception here I am saying that despite all that I said before about equality and equal opportunity between men and women I do believe still that the traditional family is the best way to go and that women who decide to Sorry, in a family, and I do stress that I do believe that women should be given birth in a family, not outside it. We have um, a situation where um, very many women, women are now giving uh, are now single mothers. In one sense, it's um, an unavoidable situation, although it's a bit unfortunate that it is happening to the level at which it is happening. Yeah. But, uh, in but it's time, almost uh, facilitated by the government policies in a lot of ways by the courts and by the government policies? It's a difficult situation because, you see, as a society, we do have a duty to, to help out single parents. Of course we do. <laughs> if not for the parents, then it is not for the parent, then it's not for the parent, then it's for the child. Oh, for sure, for sure. We do. We have a duty to... But I'm saying uh, divorce is almost... Uh, not encouraged, I wouldn't go that far, but I'd say it's made very uh, available, easy, and uh, sort of facilitated as an alternative to continuing a marriage, you know? Which then leads to more uh, yeah, well, single families. Single parent families. But weren't the wedding vows, didn't the wedding vows count for anything? I mean, what about this to death do us part? No, no, in a marriage, no, there's a wedding vows to death do us part and things like that. So richer for poorer, for better, for worse. What happened yeah. to those things? I, I don't think that really stands up for anything anymore. So if those vows are actually made, you know, if they're actually made and made, by consenting adults who are actually able to... Well, most, in most cases they are. Or words to that effect. Life, there's not such thing as a marriage that's not for life. But they fall apart in very many cases. Mm. Um, so by all means, I am suggesting that what we are doing now is in fact correct as so far as... We are helping out on those single parents who need out. We have to. Yeah, sure. How we do it is subject to the right, but we have to help them out. I just don't believe that being a single parent should become anything like the normal society. But it has been. It has and become that, hasn't it? I fear that in today's society it has become... For example, Cory Bernard... That's right, Cory Bernardi said something similar, that he thinks the uh, rise of the single parent family is not good for society. And... Um, to, count, to rebut that, that uh, Kerry Bickmore on uh, the project said that he can get stuffed, which sort of shows how far it's swung where it's more fashionable to be supportive of single parent families as opposed to the other way around, you know? Yeah, so basically what I'm saying is um, it is good, very, very good to support single parents. It's not so good to be one. Not that I, not, not that I can call, you know, I, I, I have no experience in the area. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone's against supporting them, but I'm saying um, supporting that as a, as a choice to become a single parent. That's the difference, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, to me, that is not equality. That's simply having the um, definition of family. That's right. Um, let me get on to that. Uh, people will, of course... Uh, able to find very many instances of young children, adults, who have grown up in single parent family. 
and we'll say that um, they've grown up um, fully normal. But it's a couple of issues there. It might be that in many select cases they have grown up fully normal. The absence of ice supporting my or female cats does right. not of itself and in itself um, necessarily produce dysfunctional children and adults. However, it has been suggested, and I think this is true, that on average the uh, child uh, of, a single fam of, of a single parent family, or a no parent family for that matter, will grow up relatively more, uh, more, more, <laughs> more dysfunctional than, than the um, child of a traditional yeah. family. I think so, I think that's established, yeah. More rates of criminality, um, drug use, and dysfunctionality and lower achievement <coughs> on average, you know?